So um, that was uh, wonderful, June. Thank you so much for being uh, willing to do that. There's one thing, everything today is about you, June. So thank you so much. The courage that you have is uh, an inspiration. That's the hardest thing though, right? The people who most need to, um, to experience change are the ones who refuse, who would refuse. But I console myself on that. I, I'd like to, and I'll keep on trying to one day maybe to have the opportunity to speak to bullies themselves. But in the meantime, I think that working on the root of the problem in each of us is, is, not, it is almost just as that if we can, you know, recover from, like I described in my email, the, uh, at the root of the problem is a rot that infects us all. And so to think of the bullies, if only we could get the bullies here. But it's, it's, it infects us all. Hmm. If anyone has any connections in the schools, because <laughs> I don't, but I'm trying. And it's so very serious. That's, that's part of being a bully. The, one of the reasons that people are able to bully is because they have a lack of empathy. It is the lack of empathy that makes it possible to be cruel to somebody else. If you have empathy, you can't because it hurts you to hurt somebody else. Without empathy, you can bully. So empathy, compassion, and the witness and I try to underscore this. I know a lot of people use the term bystander, and that's perfectly fine. I think that's probably the most commonly used term. The reason I don't use it is because I don't like the word. The word itself means standing by. By giving them that title, it's almost like your role is to stand by as a bystander. No, you're a witness, like a witness to a violent crime, or a witness to a murder, or a witness to anything. You have a responsibility. And they're the most powerful. There probably aren't too many bullies in this room. And there may not, also, I believe that everyone has had some experience of being a victim of being psychologically or physically dominated by somebody else. But Big B bullying, there may not be that many victims of Big B bullying in this room. But I bet everyone in this room has witnessed some form of bullying. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, after your last talk on bullying, like, um, what changed the most in me was just the, the realizing when I'm being a witness. Because before, you like your talk, it, it didn't occur to me that I was participating in a bullying incident like that. My, my participation in it was just as significant as the bully and the victim themselves. And so then that's how I was able to change, was just to kind of call it out and say, hey, that's not fair, that's cruel, or whatever. Just, yeah. So. so what, we, if we keep trying, trying, trying to reach those bullies, but what happens if we create, in the 99% of people who aren't directly the bully and victim, if we create an army of witnesses who will intervene, it'll be done. That's the end of it. So, to raise the awareness of the importance of the role that a, person, uh, that a witness has in solving this problem. The same thing happened to me after your talk. Was I went right home and I realized the situation I had heard about from the person, one of the people who had been bullied. I understood it then as bullying, and I was able to communicate that to her. And I think she said um, in response to me that that had caused her to cry when she realized that herself that she had been bullied. Then she was able to take some steps, actually do something about it, and she, she felt so empowered. All because of, of that realization, the light going on. That, oh, yes, I'm a witness to this. I see it. I need to communicate. I need to do something. And just a, a quick response to that too, it's interesting that that woman may not have realized that this is a form of bullying, and me, that first time, the, the first time that bullying was brought up at all at my very first talk, my answer, my, the question was, have I ever been bullied? And my answer was, no, I, I've never been bullied in my life. And then I go and do this bullying presentation, and I do a good think-through of the problem, 
and I realized I have. It's been psychologically dominated by somebody who used my own fear to exploit me. So it's not just the person who punches you and things like that. There are many, many forms of harm and using, exploiting fear as an act of violence against somebody else. Yeah. yeah. I found this book in the Kingston Library. It's titled The Parents' Book of Old Bullying by William Moores. Anyway, I had my mother read it and, and now I'm reading it. And my mother commented, like most people will know that the harm bullies done to the tar as the author calls the tarts, people who are being bullied. Mm -hmm. But when my mother read it, and now I feel the same way, never actually thought of it from the bully's point of view. They themselves have a problem. And it's, what we need to do is get to the root of that problem. Yeah. Well, it could be you don't end up being somebody who treats somebody cruelly unless you have experienced cruelty. You don't, we don't come out of this, we don't draw it out of thin air. We learn, right? So somebody acting like a bully isn't just this, this awful product of society. This is somebody who has experienced being cruelly treated, who learned it. Like, June, your story. The first time you told it to me at our last talk, uh, where you said that the girl spit on her hand and slapped you across the face. And that took, I mean, it also a perverse form of cre creativity, isn't it? To spit on a hand before slapping somebody. And I'd bet a million dollars that somebody did that to her. Which is tragic. She should never have done what she did to you, and nobody should have done it to her. Right? Yeah. Um, sometimes when I try to keep things in perspective, sometimes I think of the origins of, of, of words, because words are old um, often. And to me, the word bully, um, I mean, I know what it is, but it, it doesn't really create. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't gel with my mind as much as, as much as a word in another language, which uh, I know there's a French teacher in this class, but I think bully in French is intimidator, uh, which to me clicks a lot more as to what's actually truly happening when a person's bullying. Um, you know, it's, a, it's about fear, it's about control, it's about sadness, all the things that we talk about. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think in some ways, you know, looking at the word in other languages sometimes can help us understand and explore it more because it's in every world, it's in every uh, nation, but, but how it's perceived can be different by the way it's said. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, I guess the bully, you can sort of, it gives you a, a visual. I, I imagine it, a bull going and goring and trampling and, and this massive force coming um, but into it but that's not subtle is it bully so we often then we can get confused perhaps and only think of the, the, the right that kind of trampling of somebody is bullying but where's the French the intimidation and right that's that's that expresses another aspect of bullying the sheer intimidation I also thought that it was helpful too to after your last talk um, like just in terms of being a parent and parenting my kids in these situations and like um, just advising them that if there is something that somebody is using to pick on them, like not to allow them to see if it hurts you or like not to give them that power, like just to kind of shrug it off and I gave them suggestions of things that they could say like, you know, that in response and just to help prepare them for that, hopefully. Yeah. It's just like, wow, that's a really mean thing to say, like what's, What's wrong with you, or like what? What is you know? What caused you to be? That's kind of. I, I wish that there was some way to express that. Um, to to for people who might be a victim of bullying, how to communicate to them that they have no right to do this to you, so that your response will always be, "I'm appalled." Right? That word, appall. I, I should have defined it last time when I used it. That bullying is appalling. Appalling is is like the, a draining of the of the blood from the face. Just going white. I just shock horror. That's appalled. And to me, that is the healthiest reaction to bullying. I bet you if there was like some kind of truth and reconciliation thing on bullying, and for people to come and, and, and share their stories, and, and then the people who have done this, they'd probably be shocked. 
I would bet you that of all the people who report having been victims of, of bullying, uh, that probably the majority of the ones responsible for the bullying wouldn't believe that they had been bullied that person. So I do think that there is a problem with the language uh, and the terms, and especially even for this. You know, I just had a, a CC radio interview there this morning, and the uh, the host, you know, had some very good questions. But one of the questions that he even had with me when we talked on the phone before that was. Um, you know, do you think, you know, with the word bullying and a lot of people are claiming that they've been bullied and this and that, and is it all, I, I don't care, I just don't care. I don't care if it counts as bullying or not. I can't stand the thought of people being cruel to other people or people thinking that me being treated cruelly is something that's just, you just put up with, that you just tolerate it or, or I, even I deserve it, right? Even my own realizing that I have been, in a sense, bullied psychologically dominated by somebody else. I, I, I haven't actually said that until just the radio interview that was this morning. I was even thinking, should I even say that? And I, with my talk, that's, that, that some people won't admit when they've been bullied. And I put that in there, but thinking, well, is that really true? And then I realized, well, I haven't. And why? Afraid and ashamed. But you know what? It happens to everybody. And, um, you just have to take that out of the closet. And I like that you, you use the expression, you know, kill them with kindness. Although, you know, kill them. <laughs> There's an animal. That's but the whole expression. Exactly. They have killed exactly. the bulliness in them. Kill the bulliness in them. Kill the whole, what? The bulliness? The bulliness. Kill the yeah, kill the bulliness, yeah. Because yeah. that's not who they are. People aren't, if you're, he if you're healthy and well yeah. and complete, you're not a bully. So this is somebody who's been damaged, and to then treat them worse as a result of the manifestation of the damage that has occurred in their lives. Um, and actually, uh, it was a quote that my mom uh, shared with me, um, that kindness is more important than wisdom, and the recognition of this is the beginning of wisdom. And so, and you also shared about kindness, that but kindness is how love is expressed, right? That if you, are, if you are acting out of love, it will be experienced by the other person as kindness. So kill them with kindness, because that is a manifestation of love, and love is what heals, and love is, if you can't act lovingly towards somebody, then they have damaged you, right? And if the next time you meet them, you're a little bit meaner or a little bit resentful or, or they, they have changed you, they've impacted you. So you no, know, convert the hurt into compassion and show that no, you didn't break through. You didn't take away my ability to love and be loved. That is the proof that I have not been damaged or that I resist the damage or that I heal myself. I will go on loving you and others and that's a very powerful message to people who want to see that they have succeeded in damaging you, which is unfortunately what a lot of people do want. They want others to hurt. That is because they hurt. Yeah? Just a little saying, love is the bottom line of life. Love is the bottom line of life. Yes. Yes. I actually had that in a draft of this and then it, it disappeared. I wanted to say that. I wanted to say that. But it's, that's it. Love is the bottom of blind of life. I can't think of anything else. Um, can you? <laughs> right? You judge a tree by its fruit, and the only tree that keeps bearing good fruit is love. Is there anything else, or any other comments or questions, or... The bottom line of this is, is food. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for being here. It was fun.